episode three of Why Sports Works, and well, we have the right person that we're talking to. The Olympic fever is just about settling down. Well, will it ever settle down? India's greatest Olympics, and I have uh, a person who was involved right in the thick of things, Siddharth Pandey, with us. Uh, someone who needs no introduction. If you're a hockey fan, you definitely don't need to know who Siddharth Pandey is. But uh, for those of you who are watching this, Siddharth Pandey is a former hockey player. He's a sportsman, a broadcaster, a writer, an analyst, a storyteller. If I have to be honest, he's more than just your normal sportscaster. That's who Siddharth Pandey is. He comes from a family of athletes. His mother played table tennis at the national level. His father and uncle represented Mumbai. Um, at multiple nationals in hockey and before Siddharth, uh, well, he played multiple sports, but uh, he eventually excelled in, in hockey. He's also an FIH Level 2 certified coach. The Hockey Indian League to the Hockey World Cup to the Premier Badminton League. He spent a lot of time behind the mic as well across a variety of disciplines. And if that isn't enough, he's also a podcast host. Yeah, So he's uh, well into social media as well. And most recently, if you enjoyed the broadcast of the Olympics, a good part of that is because Siddharth Pandey was behind the mic um, across a whole bunch of sports, particularly hockey. And that's probably where you heard him last. And I'm guessing the last time you saw him in a video was because of a video that went viral on social media. It was an emotional Siddharth Pandey when the Indian men's hockey team created history uh, by making it to the semi-final for the first time in almost half a century. Sid, it's an absolute pleasure having you on episode three of Why Sports Works. We know that you've been doing a lot of talking over the last one month, but I'm guessing it's about a topic that you will never be tired of talking about. Uh, Nav, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be on the show. Uh, also, I have to congratulate you because it's the best introduction I've ever got. <laughs> uh, it's a rather over generous introduction, but thank you for it nonetheless. Absolute pleasure to be on board. And uh, yeah, you know, the last fortnight has been life changing in more ways than one. And uh, not just for me, uh, it has been life changing for a lot of our athletes and their families and friends who are associated with them. Uh, just an absolute pleasure to have been part of this epoch making, not even history making project. Uh, you know, so yeah, you know, glad to be talking Olympics because the Olympics may be over, but as you said, rightly so, the fever is yet to die down. Absolutely. Um, you know, if I have to be very honest, Sid, I cover cricket for a living. Mm. I've mm. been doing this for several years. Mm. But for that one month, and particularly that one week when that when the Indian men's and women's hockey team were doing what they were doing. Yeah. It was hockey over everything else for all of India. Right? Yeah. Cricket and everything else took a back seat. Yeah. I've teared up quite a bit watching sport, but it's been a while. And when I saw what the Indian men's and ho women's hockey team did, yeah. it was emotional. It was, yeah. it was something that was out of the ordinary. If we have to be very honest, not many people uh, expected them to do what they mm. did. Put it mm. past them, right? Yeah. And that video of you emotional in the makeshift commentary box that you all were in mm. was, I think, testimony to what this means, not just to Indian hockey, but to Indian sport. Can you, yeah. you probably saw that video a little later when you, when you regained your senses. Talk to us about that moment and what you were going through. Yeah, no, so there are actually two, three aspects to what you've uh, just said, you know, and uh, starting with the cricket bit. Uh, that you said. First of all, good news. Uh, BCC and the ICC have just declared that uh, they want cricket to be yeah. part of the Olympic Games in 2028. Uh, uh, there are serious underlying yeah. issues uh, there. I don't know how they will work around that. Uh, two issues that straight away come to mind is one, which format will go to the Olympic Games. Yeah. Uh, because uh, the Olympic Games is the highest level of sport in every sport. Yeah. Uh, hockey is 11-11. Wrestling is what it is. You're matched by weight, swimming, athletics, track and field. Uh, the highest form of cricket is five-day cricket, you know, uh, and the Olympics last for 14 days. Uh, so I'm not sure how they're going to work around it that. <laughs> yeah. And the second, second big issue is the BCCI is a private body. Uh, and Indian cricketers, uh, BCCI has said in a high court on affidavit that they represent the board of control for cricket in India. And we are not part of the IOA. 
so there are some underlying issues there, but I welcome it. I hope cricket becomes a part of the Olympic movement as it was. Uh, people don't remember, but cricket was part of the Olympic Games at one point of time. Uh, and uh, I'll, I welcome it not just because I love cricket, but we'll have another medal prospect in any format of the game. Uh, more medals, uh, what more can a sports lover ask for? So good luck to you guys at the BCCI and ICC. I hope you can come up with a format which will go to the Olympic Games. Secondly, about uh, a lot of people getting emotional and teary-eyed, uh, including me, of course, including you and uh, lacks of others. Uh, I, I'd said this on air, actually. and I, I don't mind saying it again. Now, but I think it has sort of established what I always thought was true. Cricket is in our minds now. It is our passion, but hockey is in our hearts. Uh, the history of hockey, what it has done for our country in the last century, that history belongs to every Indian. Uh, we take great pride in our eight Olympic gold medals. No country has come close. No country is likely to match that for a while. Uh, we all take pride in what they went on to achieve at the Olympic Games. For the longest time, the Indian Olympic contingent was basically the Indian hockey team plus 10. Uh, you know, that, that's what our Olympic contingents used to be like. Uh, the first world-class product that our country put out were not engineers or doctors, they were hockey players. Uh, you know, and we take great pride in that. And somehow, what the men's and women's team have done is linked an entire country's memory to the past, uh, to the stories that we've all heard growing up of the greatness of our hockey teams and our players and our parents telling us stories of how we rule the world in hockey. For our generation, me and you now, we've never seen an Indian hockey team on the podium. Uh, it has taken a while. It's taken four, more than four decades uh, to be absolutely precise. But let's go with four decades because 2020 would have been the 40th anniversary of our last Olympic medal, which was gold. In that journey, uh, from Moscow to Tokyo, uh, hockey players such as me, uh, who have followed the sport, seen it under a microscope, have gone through a gamut of emotions. We've seen the highs and lows. We've, we remember Sydney 2000, where we were within touching distance of a semi-final. All we needed was a win against Poland, and Poland scores with 10 seconds on the clock. They draw the match and we're out. I saw the disaster that was Atlanta and Beijing. I saw the 12th, the last place finish in London. Uh, I saw what happened in Rio where we got very, very close. My article is still on scroll as to how the Indian hockey team is very, very close to a medal. It was not to be. We lost to the eventual world champions and silver medalist Belgium. And then when we were coming to Tokyo, I was screaming from every, every loudspeaker that I could get a hold of saying, this is a special bunch. Believe in them. Uh, but as you said, you know, the narrative around hockey was so negative. Uh, people were talking about hockey in dying or dead terms. Uh, there were journalists who were writing obituaries of Indian hockey in 2008. So when you've been a part of that journey, when you've seen all of it, it's, it's just buried in your subconscious somewhere. You know, it's all those disappointments, frustrations, anger, aggression. It's all there inside of you. And when Hardik Singh scored that third goal against Great Britain, that dam just burst. That dam of emotions just burst. Not just for me, but for my co-com as well, Sunil Taneja. He got his first break as a commentator due to hockey. Good old PHL days. Uh, you know, so he owes a lot to hockey. And uh, behind us were Telugu commentators, uh, you know, Sudhir Mahawadi and uh, Norman Isaac, two very senior broadcasters who were watching the game with us and listening to Hindi commentary. They, they, were, they had an off. Uh, that was not, that moment was not meant to be captured. We were not in vision. Uh, we were in the comp box. Uh, we were not uh, on the field or anything of that sort. Uh, but as fate would have it, Sudhir Mahavadi ji had a brainwave and he decided that I'll capture this moment. And so I just, uh, I had no idea he was there. Uh, if you see the video, my head's down, I'm in tears. Uh, 
uh, just trying to hold it all together, just take in the moment uh, because it had been very, very long. And we hockey players feel very strongly that we've been treated unfairly by sections of the press uh, who have uh, spoken about hockey in, in less than glowing terms, if I may be very parliamentary about my language. Uh, and we needed this moment as a nation. We needed this moment as a hockey nation. And Asian hockey needed this moment because... Uh, India was in a way carrying the flag of Asian hockey. There's no Pakistan at the Olympic Games anymore. You know, Japan did not make it out of the group stage. They were never likely to. Malaysia is not there. So in a way, the Indian men's and women's hockey team were carrying the flag of Asia, not just the subcontinent or not just India. So, you know, when all this thing, they just came together and when the final whistle went against Great Britain, and it was Great Britain, uh, you know, we have, we've met Great Britain eight times in Olympic history. They won four, we won four. All our four victories came on grass. All their four victories came on AstroTurf. So this match, the ninth match, was actually a tiebreaker of sorts. You know, and it was, it, it, it was just that there are no, I, 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 you know, if you see that video, uh, which did go viral, uh, I ran out of words. I had nothing to say. Uh, because I had nothing to say the moment, you know, in commentary, we often say now, let the pitchers breathe. And uh, yeah, you know, I just wanted the pitchers to breathe because I had nothing to say. Uh, there is, uh, you remember, uh, now, you, you've been covering cricket for a while. Richie Benno went 25 minutes of a test match without saying a word. You know, he had nothing to say. <laughs> when the final whistle went against Great Britain, I should have said a lot. That's what people say, you know, you're a commentator. How can you not say anything? But I had nothing to say. I stand by that because those pictures spoke a thousand words, you know, and it was just a moment that will stay with me for the rest of my life. And I said this on cam again that, uh, you know, I'm sure these are emotions that millions of hockey fans felt. I'm sure you felt that as well. The only difference is I got caught on camera. That's it.